Hi everyone. So this is going to be the first and what I hope is going to be a short series about uh, Logic's tempo and beat mapping functions. That something that might go uh, a little ignored, especially if you're kind of used to just doing everything to a click and everything else. Um, there are a couple situations where you'd want to record without a click. Uh, if you're just going through a temp track to maybe like pace out a movie score or something like that that you're working on, uh, or if you're just messing around with a you know piano patch and just want to play an idea freely and like with rubato, uh, but then later on when you want to add some stuff into it, it becomes very difficult if you're trying to do it without a grid. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make something freely and then we're going to create a grid around it. So that way, if you want to add things in later or quantize to clean up your recording, we can do that. Okay, so what I have here is a pre-recorded track, uh, and I'll play a little bit for you. So you get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the, uh, the click, and you can hear that it's recorded freely. It was recorded without a click at all. So it doesn't line up, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to shape this tempo and uh, metric functions around it so we have a, uh, a solid tempo map that we can edit to and cut and paste and do whatever else we need, all right? Okay, so the very first thing you want to do, I actually closed up the global tracks here so I can show you from the beginning. Uh, you want to open your global tracks. You can do that by hitting the G key or hitting this little guy up here, Okay. The two that you want to see for this are a tempo track and beat mapping track. And you can right click or control click uh, and you can show and hide whatever you want to see. Okay. Now, tempo, we're not going to mess with at all right now. I just want to show you how it's going to change as we go through our functions here. This guy is important, beat mapping. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on our MIDI region right here. Okay, and I want to zoom in a little bit here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it from here. I'm going to turn off the click. All right, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be pulling these little ticks here on the measures to the places that we want them to align in the MIDI and you'll see that the tempo track will shape around that, okay? I'm gonna leave a measure up front here, just a, a blank one, so I'm gonna start at two, okay? I'm gonna say that this start note right here is my measure two. Uh, I'm counting this at this tempo, one and two and three and four and. So that would be my next one, that would be where three is. I'm going to click on here and make that measure three. And now you can already see that starting to shape up here. Okay. Now you can even get a little bit more fine grained if you want. Uh, like for instance, say if I wanted to do every quarter note, this gets to be a little bit messy, but of course you get a more accurate tempo map. You do it that way. I'm going to take four, drop it right there, okay? And you can start to see how everything's getting a little bit closer because I played it somewhat in time with itself. Six is right on, seven is right on. Okay, and then I want to come back and shape in a couple of these. Okay, so what you see is you see that our tempo how it was fluctuating because I played it freely, but now if I turn on the click, so now if you need to quantize or anything like that, you can do it to clean up the recording. All right, so I'm going to flip away and I'm going to fill in the rest of these beats so you don't have to sit here and watch me do this and I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so we're back and uh, I have done as much of the beat 
placement that I want to, uh, that I think will be fine for our tempo map and for our recording. Uh, and this guy up here, I'm actually going to just drag down, because as you can see, it's not going to really affect our measure placement at all, because we have beat, you know, measure 2, beat 1, mapped to where it's going to go. So anything that happens before that, we're just going to kind of keep it around the same tempo. Now, let's listen back. Nothing that I played has changed, but... Tempo picks up a little bit here, it's kind of all over the place still, but that's fine. And I do a dramatic slowdown. Tempo here compensates for it. And I have a little fermata here. Okay, so now, what are the benefits of having this map like this? Well, the first thing is if you're dealing with the score at all, or if you like working in the score editor, we now have something that is way more manageable and readable. If you want to ignore the rests I don't have it that I was pedaling everything and I don't have it but it is now just pretty straight ahead you can really read that it's very very readable whereas previously we had stuff that was kind of I mean it's not readable the other thing too is that if I want to do my quantize right now and I can quantize all this kind of this to eighth notes really because it is uh, it is pretty close to eighth notes I can just click on the region and I can hit quantize to eighth note, and it's going to look to all the tempo changes that we made, and it's going to snap. The score becomes even more legible now. And the other thing, too, is if I put in a Let's see if I have anything here that I want to use for a loop. I don't know what any of this is going to sound like. Uh, let's do something percussive. Okay, cool. So I found a tambourine loop just for example's sake here. And we're going to wait till this little second part comes in. Drop my tambourine loop in here. And we will, we'll just say L for loop. And now, if you watch, the oh, pull that back, try that. The tambourine loop will actually shape. Let's get the slowdown. And your audio or your MIDI loops will shape to it. Okay, so quantizing becomes more manageable. Okay, you get a better quality uh, performance out of that. Uh, looping and adding parts becomes more manageable because you now have everything to a grid, yet you still get the benefit of having played it freely. Um, and you can just build your tempo around that. So anybody that, you know, you totally hate playing to a click, uh, that's what you can do. Now, in future series, we can talk about doing this with audio for beat mapping too. I just wanted to stick to the MIDI today and maybe uh, at some point add in a couple of other... Um, you know, just a couple of other parts and you kind of see how it becomes a little bit more manageable. All right. Talk to you soon.